This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are just two days away from puck drop on the 2024 Stanley Cup Finals between the Panthers and the Oilers. So it is now time to break it all down in depth by talking to Dom, Tom Vecchio. Dom. Tom Vecchio of FanDuel Research. Dom Vecchio is definitely doing some shady stuff. Shady stuff behind a restaurant, you know. Anyway, uh, Tom Vecchio will join us, not Dom, uh, to break down the Stanley Cup Finals between the Panthers and the Oilers, break down the series prices, who he thinks wins this one. We're going to talk about Game 1 as well to get you ready for that. And then I'll dive into Formula 1 in Montreal. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. You can find him on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Find his work at FanDuel Research, where he is doing the solo shot for us on Mondays and Tuesdays, but also talking NHL, of course, here on the show, NBA. Tom, a delight to have you on the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. This is a matchup for the Stanley Cup. I did not want to see there were four <laughs> possible outcomes. The Rangers making it, the Stars making it, or both of them making it. And none of those things happened. But we have two very deserving teams uh, for this matchup. Uh, there's a lot to break down. Uh, obviously, have a very uh, specific direction I'm expecting the series to go, which means I have things all moving in that, uh, you know, moving in, in that same direction in terms of props, spreads, et cetera, et cetera. I'm ready to go. I feel like the, uni the universe owes you one here. So I think we're in store for a good Stanley Cup finals. Like you said, you had the Stars ticket and then you're a Rangers fan. So I feel like they owe you one. So I'm feeling good about pre predictions for you for the Stanley Cup finals uh, on account of the fact that, like, you're due. Right. I mean, I, you know, I talked about the Stars at the beginning of the season and they got this yeah. far. So at least I was like directionally right. Right. Um, you know, it wasn't all the way right, but. Uh, the angles that I'm taking are obviously very specific. They're all correlated. Uh, and you can say the same thing about anything. If you know, I happen to like the Panthers, we'll get into it. But if you happen to like the Oilers, you can all line things up in that uh, that same spot. As always, find the best market for your assumptions and go from there. We'll dive into that with Tom. Outline where he's seen value of FanDuel Sportsbook for the Stanley Cup Finals and gain number one. Then I'll talk again Formula One in Montreal after that. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We already broke down the NBA Finals with Tom as well. Uh, talked about game number one for tonight. You can find that on the uh, covering the spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV Plus. We also had on Christina Blacker of FanDuel TV to break down the Belmont Stakes. She discussed a uh, pretty loaded field, honestly, but this one only 10 horses, but a lot of big names in it. So if you want Christina's thoughts on the Belmont Stakes and one other race this weekend, just go to the Covering the Spread podcast feed to find all of that. The NBA Finals are here, and FanDuel's giving you the chance to win alongside the champions because right now, new customers get 200 dollars in bonus bets with a winning five dollar bet that is two hundred dollars used on same game parlays live bets and so much more there is no better place to bet all the finals action at van america's number one sports book just download the app and take a shot at an extra 200 bucks fanduel official sports betting partner of the nba must be 18 plus in dc and 21 plus in president select states first online real money wager only five dollar first deposit required Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800- Ooh, Wyoming got moved. Interesting. Oh, they changed the disclaimer. How about that? Well, shout out Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. Now, I had to like, pay attention to the disclaimer, though, and like actually like, not go autopilot for the full thing. This is throwing me off. 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. one 877 
770 stop in Louisiana. Visit MD Gambling Help at Oregon, Maryland, 1 800 Gambler.net in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit Gambling Helpline MA.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York, Wyoming. The, the loan is shift there for those keeping tally at home. So we were good. Uh, I was on my toes. We got it. Only Wyoming shifting gears to be the fanduel.com slash RG or 1 800 Gambler. Now, let's get into the important things, Tom, and talk about the Oilers and the Panthers. We'll talk about the specific betting markets here in a second, but I want to get your overall view of how these two teams mesh here first. What's your view of the matchups between Oilers and Panthers here for the Stanley Cup Finals? These teams match up well, and ultimately, this is probably not the draw the Oilers wanted to see going up against the Panthers because Sasha Barkov is on the other side for the Panthers who won the the Selkie this year. He is the best defensive forward in the league. Not only this year, he's won it in the past, but throughout the playoffs, he's proven, you know, been been able to shut down uh, Kucherov and Stamkos in the first round with the Lightning, Poshnok and Marshawn in the second round, and then Panarin, Zabanajat and Kreider in the conference finals. He's absolutely unbelievable what he does. And he's going to be on the ice essentially every single second that McDavid is on the ice. That's going to be the pairing. The Panthers, while they're at home, they have the second line change. So it's going to be very, very tough for McDavid to get favorable matchups. So in terms of uh, how the teams match up, this is a very, very tough spot for the Oilers. My overall take for these teams is the simplest way to put it is McDavid, Dreisaitl, and I'm going to put Zach Hyman up there are like A-plus players. And as the lineup moves down through the rest of it, you know, we have the A players, the B plus Bs, and let's say their lineup goes down to a C or C minus type players. For the Panthers, let's just say it's just uh, Barkov and Kachuk as A plus, we'd rate them. Their lineup goes down, but theirs lineup stops at like a B minus. So at every other step of the way, I'm going to put the Panthers ahead of the Oilers. While the top lines can be neck and neck, every other spot, the Panthers are just a step better. So when push comes to shove, the Panthers are going to have the edge in every single category that I'm looking. They're better on offense. They have a deeper defense. They have some really big defenders, which have been proven to be good at boxing out opposing forwards to give Bobrovsky clean sight lines. I think all of this is very, very important. So, yes, I do have the Panthers winning this series. So the Panthers right now at FanDuel Sportsbook are minus 130. They've been inching out as the week has gone along. Open at minus 125. They're minus 128 yesterday, now minus 130. How much are they benefiting here from this specific matchup? Like, let's say, you know, it didn't work out the way that it did. Would you still feel as confident against the with the Panthers here? Or is it just like the Oilers happen to be a poor matchup for them? I think the Panthers are obviously getting the respect that they deserve being there last year. I also, I would say that they'd be the favorite over Dallas, especially if the Panthers had home ice. And it's, it's again, it's a super, super close uh what would be a super close. I don't think the line would be as heavy, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the Panthers over anyone. And it's to the point where I don't think the Panthers are going to lose four games to anyone at any point this year. They're just, they're clicking on all cylinders. They have a a roster that was built for the playoffs. They have uh, speed, they have size, they can play tough, they can score with anyone. So I will take the Panthers ahead of the Oilers time and time again. Okay, so Panthers minus 130. That's where Tom is turning for the overall series prices here. Now, as you mentioned, there are a lot of different ways to bet that assumption. If you if you go into the assumption that, hey, the Panthers come in here, able to shut down guys like McDavid and, and things like that, how do you want to bet that as far as like the full menu of options we have to bet on that one assumption? Right. And, you know, as I mentioned up at the top, I have everything in line. So I think the Panthers win the series four to two. And whatever you may think, again, if you have the Oilers winning in four to three or you have the Panthers winning four to three, that immediately tells you something. So if I have the Panthers winning the series 42, which is at plus 490, it means I also want to have a a smaller unit on the series to go six games and also the Panthers to cover the series spread minus one and a half at plus 160. So, yeah, it's like, you know, essentially putting all your eggs in one basket. But if we decrease the unit size, we can have a little bit of exposure, limit our risk and still be correlated along the same market. And again, like I said, if you have the Oilers winning. You could take them in seven games and you take the, the Oilers plus one and a half on the series spread. You could take it. Seven games. So I've always said this about playoff series and going back however many years we've been doing this. I want everything to be moving in the same direction. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I want everything to be correlated at least from the jump. And if it gets to six games, you can hedge out. 
right. if, to get to that seventh game or whatever it might be. So Panthers four to two, six games, and Panthers minus one and a half. So the four to two is plus four ninety at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let me find uh, the other ones here. Total Ooh, games, uh, six games is plus one ninety eight at FanDuel Sportsbook, and then uh, the series spread. Trying to find that, I probably scrolled past it if I had to guess. I did not. Oh yeah, it's right here. Um, the Panthers minus one and a half games plus one sixty at FanDuel Sportsbook. If I give you one bet, Tom, like let's say. Okay, I want some investment in this series, but I don't want to go too hard. Don't want to, you know, put in the mental thought process of allocating different unit sizes. Are you going with the full series price of minus one thirty? The series spread minus one and a half at plus one sixty. Six games, four to two. What's your favorite bet out of those? You know, as a casual viewer, if you have no rooting interest, it's probably six games is the easiest. Sure, because again, if it gets to six games, you could look to hedge out. You know, the, the team is up, what is it, four to one or three to one going into game five. You know, there's multiple ways to do it. And that's just very simple. You don't have a rooting interest either way. You want to see a, a few extra games. You don't want to see a, a sweep. Six games at plus one, 198 is probably just the, the, the easiest, most interesting way to go if you don't care who wins. Okay. So if Tom had one bet, Six games plus one ninety eight. Well, you might not, but if you're you're recommending to like more casual viewers, plus one ninety eight for six games. But it does sound like you want specifically the Panthers yeah. buying into this being a big part of the uh, assumption here. Now that also does play into we look at the Con Smythe Award and. Connor McDavid is a favorite, so we can safely assume that he is not going to be your bet. He is two to one right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. So if we're not betting McDavid, Tom, where are we going instead? Again, there's a lot of case to be made for Sasha Barkov if he completely shuts down McDavid and Dreisaitl and they don't do anything. You know, I said this the other day on the radio. If that's the case and Barkov shines, the Panthers probably win this series 4-1, to one, and he likely comes away with the award. If I'm expecting the series to go a little bit longer, could be a little bit more variance. I think there could be a bit of scoring, especially in the early few games. And that leads me to Carter Verhage to win the Conn Smythe at 28-1. to one. Uh, I also would like him to lead the series in goals at plus 750. We'll get there in a second. Now, it's super close between Barkov doing things on the defensive end. Kachuk is certainly there. But Carter Verhage right now, throughout the playoffs, nine goals, eight assists, 17 total points. Kachuk has five goals, 14 assists, and 19 total points. So when I'm looking at this, it's very possible that Kachuk will end specifically this series and the playoffs overall with more points compared to Carter Verhage. But in my mind, Goals are, you know, game winners. Goals win you games. Goals win you series. So if they're tied at the end of the day when it comes to points, if Verhage has the edge in goals, that should stand out on the score sheet. That should stand out to the voters that they won because Verhage is scoring. Everyone can pick up an assist. So if I'm shooting for the upside, which I want to do with Verhage along the lines of the Panthers winning, the goals are the difference makers. And that's where I want to push, you know, push the narrative, I guess, for my, my Panthers bets is that they're going to win because Verhage scores. If Kachuk picks up 10 assists along the way, that's great. But if he has the game winning goals, the series defining moments, that is what brings you an MVP essentially. And that's a more, more important too. Those goals are when it's a lower scoring series. So do you think this will be kind of a lower scoring series? Because if it is, then that makes those goals even more crucial. It leads to closer games, which leads to more like key moments like that are you expecting yes. overall a pretty low scoring series i would expect one one or two of the first few games one or two of the first three games to have a few goals as we saw last last year there was a bit more scoring than i think anyone would anticipate in the finals but it happened the year before with colorado and, and tampa where there's a, a bunch of scoring they won seven well in one game six two in one game and the next games were three to two two to one so a bit more scoring early on after that every other game is about the under so okay. As the series goes on, those, like, as you said, defining moments, I think will lie with Carter Verhage. Okay, so Verhage, 28 to 1 to win the Con Smythe right now. You had alluded to the, um, you can bet on who will uh, score the most goals in the right. series right now. Zach Hyman is the leader. He is plus 370, and then Verhage, plus 750. Uh, I'm assuming that, that number stands out to you as well. Yes, if I'm expecting him to have these big moments, it's probably there. There's absolutely a case to be made for Zach Hyman especially if we do see the Oilers get extra power play opportunities. He's been fantastic all season. Reinhardt is okay. If the number was just uh, a hair longer at 
five and a half or closer to six to one, that's where Reinhardt would be in because he's yeah. also great on the power play. Okay, so we are on Verhage to lead in total goals, plus 750. Verhage to win the con Smythe, 28 to 1. Panthers minus 1.5, plus 160 for the total games. All right, six total games, plus 198. Panthers win 4 to 2, plus 490. Panthers win minus 130. So if you agree with Tom, the Panthers win this series, you got a lot of different routes for betting. You can kind of find your favorite based on your risk tolerance, your view of the series overall, and things like that, and your overall betting philosophies. Hopefully enough options there for you to bet this one the way you see it. Let's talk now about game one, specifically here between the Oilers and the Panthers. Right now, FanDuel Sportsbook in game one, Panthers minus 137 on the money line, Oilers at plus 114, total is five and a half with the over at minus 118. So for game one specifically, Tom, where are you seeing value here? The over five and a half would be a lean, as I said, a a little bit of scoring early on. Not going to be surprised there. Uh, With a little bit of a narrative in play, let's go to Matthew Chuck for a goal at plus 190. Now, while I don't expect him to lead the, the team or the series in goals, last year in the, in the Stanley Cup Finals, Kachuk couldn't play the last few games. Uh, he had a broken sternum, and he, he you know, tried to get out there for one of the games. You know, long story that his his brother, Brady Kachuk, is the captain of the Senators, had to literally help him get out of bed, help him get dressed to be on the ice, and he just wasn't able to do it. And Kachuk at plus 190 is an awesome number. The last few games of the Rangers series, uh, last five games specifically, kicked 21 shots on goal and no goals. He's a high-volume shooter. He plays on the top six. You know, they jumbled their lines around a little bit, but it's either the first or second forward line. He's on the first power play. He's a high-volume shooter. It's a fantastic number. They're at home. I want to build at least a little bit of a feel-good narrative that he's he's back, he's ready to go, and he does score, which is something that everyone would expect to happen. It's not like this is some crazy long shot player to score a goal so i'll take a chuck at plus 190 i like the over in this game more of a lean and whoever wins this game i'll simply be on the other side for game two i think they will split the first two games Okay, so Tom's best bet for game number one is Matthew Kachuk to score an anytime goal. That is plus 190 at FanDuel Sportsbook and a slight lean towards the over. The over five and a half goals is currently minus 118 as well. Yep. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Find his work at FanDuel Research. Tom, looking forward to talking to you about this series and the NBA Finals as both of those go along. Good luck to you with your bets uh, tonight for the NBA Finals game one. Enjoy. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me. All righty. Again, find Tom on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one to get all of his great work there. Before we close up for today, do you want to dive in to some formula one in Montreal? And for this race, the big question is how you view Red Bull, because if you've been following formula one recently, you know that Red Bull was dominant all of last year was dominant to start this year, but is now not one, two of the past three races. And if you open the outright markets of FanDuel Sportsbook, Max Verstappen is minus 210. He was minus 240 yesterday. So there's been some movement against uh, Max, or minus 220 yesterday. And that movement has been towards Lando Norris. Lando Norris to win is now down to plus 550. And when I run my simulations, I am very high on Lando. And I'm a little bit worried about that because, again, as always, when you fight the market, the market tends to win. And I'm way off market on Lando Norris being way above on him as of right now, even when he's down to plus 550. So I want to acknowledge the possibility that my model is either undervaluing Verstappen or undervaluing Ferrari. Personally, I'm not too worried about the Red Bull portion of that because... I do think their downturn is legitimate because other teams have gained ground. And because Max Verstappen has said that the RB20 car is not well built for Montreal. It's a bumpy track, has a lot of curbing, which makes it somewhat similar to Monaco, similar to Singapore, a couple races that they've lost recently. Some similarities to uh, Miami as well. And I find that pretty intriguing. So I agree with the model and being lower on Red Bull. The fear I have is not being high enough on Ferrari. But there is a way to circumvent that. And that takes us to the uh, specials market at FanDuel Sports. But you scroll down, if you're in the Formula One tab, scroll down to Motorsport Specials up to 10 to 1. And here we can find a couple of bets that I think are pretty intriguing. The first one is for Charles Leclerc or Lando Norris to win the race. That is plus 250. Now, Norris shortened overnight. This market did not move. So we're getting to still buy into Lando at a similar number while getting exposure to Leclerc as well. Of course, Leclerc won Monaco. 
He is insanely fast over a single lap as well. And Ferrari brought upgrades two races ago. Didn't really show up in Imola, but they could show up here. So if I look at this specific market, I have it at uh, 41.5% for either Leclerc or Norris to win the race. So a plus 250, that's a pretty good value. The better value by my numbers alone would be to bet Norris to win a plus 550. But again, I'm a bit worried that maybe I'm not giving Ferrari enough credit for what they showed in Monaco as well. So if you want to work your way around that, I think you could go with Leclerc or Norris to win the race. Based on my model, the better value is actually on either Carlos Sainz or Norris to win the race. The reason that I'm not going that direction is because um, I'm a bit worried that my model's too high on signs relative to Leclerc. It does have Leclerc above him, but especially recently, Leclerc's been fully, fully on point. So if Ferrari wins, I probably should have it distributed a bit more towards Leclerc versus signs. So my model says that signs or Leclerc to win a plus five or at five to one is a better bet, but. Personally, I think that the Leclerc or Norris bet is better. So to me, overall for this race, I want to be low on Red Bull, given that they've been vulnerable. Three races now, three very different tracks. And Verstappen has said himself that he thinks this track does not set up well for the way that that RB20 car tends to run. I think that gives value for Norris, value for the Ferraris as well. And if I lump them together, that does give me some security. Ideally, I'd be able to find a market where it's Leclerc, Sainz, or Norris to win. I'm just going to check, check check, quick to make sure that that does not exist. Doesn't look like it does. Um, if that, if you were to find that, basically Leclerc, Norris, or Sainz to win, I would love that market personally. I would have those specific odds at 49.4%. So if you can find that, I think that's pretty enticing. But with the markets available right now, FanDuel Sportsbook, I prefer Norris or Leclerc to win at plus 250 with some thought towards going with Signs or Norris to win. That is five to one right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. But overall, kind of feel okay betting against Red Bull, which is going to, I'm sure, work out gloriously for us. What could go wrong there? That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Back with you once again tomorrow. We'll get you set for the weekend. We're going to talk some NASCAR and Sonoma on tomorrow's show. So to get that, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to check out our show with Tom breaking down the NBA Finals or with Christina Blacker to break down the Belmont Stakes, both available in the Covering the Spread podcast feed on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Big thank you once again to Tom Vecchio. Find him on X at Tom underscore Vecchio1. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets for NBA Finals Game 1. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to close out the week. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.